Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is TBR Schmidt. This is my wife, Samantha. Hello. And today we are watching episode eight of The Fall of the House of Usher. So finishing off the series. What have you thought so far? I have loved this series. It's hard for me to pick a Mike Flanagan series that I like the most, or at least like rank them. Right. So I'm really excited to see how this kind of plays out. And I guess we'll probably discuss after. Yeah, I've really enjoyed this one for sure. I think I still enjoy other ones more, but we haven't finished this one yet. So kind of like you said, after this episode might completely change my opinion, but we've been having an amazing time with this. It's late at night. The baby is asleep for now. So we're ready to just get right into this. Yeah, I'm very excited. It's a long episode, so I feel like there's going to be a lot going on. <laughs> So if you'd like to see the full length reaction for this, as well as everything else that we've reacted to, the link to our Patreon is in the description. If you'd like to interact with us on our Twitch, Twitter, and Instagram, all those links are in the description as well. And with that, let's get into the episode. 941,000 since 1985. I assume death from Ligodome? Millions, Roderick. I'm sorry I couldn't accept your resignation. Name your price. Oh, sweetie, you are funny. Yeah, she's been collecting her price this whole time. There's only a few more transactions left. There's the opening bell. Opening bell? Representative from Fortunato Incorporated. Oh. Jeez Louise, that was loud in my ear. <laughs> the opening bell, so like for the stock market, for Fortunato? <gasps> it doesn't sound in the... Ooh. <laughs> That was all you. It was you! <laughs> I was about to say that doesn't sound on the wall anymore. They shouldn't have talked to you without me here and they know better. Now you can give your real statement. My statement was the truth. Uh-oh. Trouble child. Your father was the swing vote on the board. He abused and mutilated my mother and got himself killed. That's true. Your mother, after I talk to her, she'll do what's right for the company. Then you won't talk to her. Damn. And if you think you're coming near her with another pair of pliers over my dead body, you fucking ghoul. Woo! Jeez, met his match. Yeah, is she like, why aren't you This dead? is awkward. Did you tell him yet? Not yet. It's me. I bet. Just get me to kill myself before you could kill me. What else did you want? Justice. What does that look like? Yeah, how much more can he Suppose go through? I'll know it when I see it. Well, he's not satisfied yet. I am pretty sure you will. Is he? Is he gonna see what's really going on around him? She had custody. I couldn't stand that, so I waited till they were old enough and I just bombed them with money. Oh, that's how he got them? And they picked me. Of course they did. So maybe she's still alive. But whatever if their mother had been in there, it was gone. It was killed by the money. But Lenore always had her in there. I saw her today. Beautiful Annabelle Lee. Definitely not alive. Well, he said she couldn't live without them. Yeah. They only knew appetite, and here you said, gorge yourselves. You didn't feed them, though, did you? You starved them. Hey. What did you fill them up with, Roderick? What did you have to fill them with? The poverty of you. Maybe they died in their childhoods. Oh. Wow. Damn, she put a gun in her mouth or something? Now you're walking the halls at Fortunato Rufus Griswold's arm on your shoulder. We're not done with him. I don't know you. I think I made him up. <sighs> Damn. Yeah, I remember this part. You also said you'd confess. There are no more bodies left, Roderick. I think there are. I'm sure I can't tempt you. No. Hasn't he already had a sip? All right, we're gonna find out what happens. <laughs> My goddamn hero. Oh, wow, the jester is freaking Rufus. Roderick Usher, the future of Fortunato. Damn, so is he in the walls? They kill him and put him in the walls? You are my right hand. I told the board. You should tell them that it was your idea. I may have already said that. <laughs> oh, how cool. 
There is nobody that I trust more than you, and there is not a single person who does not know that. Wow, so everyone knows that he's next in line. <laughs> After tomorrow, you can afford to take a bath of this stuff. Dang, that was easy. Yeah. He's pretty much like, I already told everyone I love you. So was that wine poisoned? I feel like that'd be too easy. Oh. Is she the poison? Down in the basement. It's oh. gonna be the foundation. Open walls. We can make all the noise we want. Oh, really? You can get over here. You can do anything you want to me. Except that challenge. Yeah, you're <laughs> right. Damn, just like that. Now throw him in the walls. Oh my god, they left him alive? That's fucking brutal. Damn, at least kill him first. Make all the noise you want, apparently. That doesn't mean that the feds weren't right. Dang. Man behind it all, the man responsible, well, he has got to go, doesn't he? I never should have made Roger take the fall for this. That's over now. That's behind us. I know, I know. Jeez, the fact that they also gave him a candle to have light there for just long enough. I was expecting Roderick to have, like, a bigger shift of his character. Yeah. I'm kind of shocked he's so cool and comfortable with this. I guess Annabelle was right. Like, she never really knew him, and we never really knew him. What if there was a candidate who already escaped the hangman once? <laughs> Riswold admitted was a cut above. Doug is on grave. No one's due back at work for a week, so happy new year. I'm with <coughs> you on Roderick. Oh. Brutal. Oh. Man. I almost feel sorry for him. That was fucked up. Almost. He's also fucked up. Yeah, he's terrible. And he won't make it past morning, not with the cyanide. Cyanide? I fucked him in his car, he took off looking for some blow, and you and I hit a second venue. I mean, they can kind of justify this a little bit because he was such a terrible person. But this is, like, next level. Yeah. No, they didn't, like, just dethrone him or go to the board and get him removed. They literally murdered him. Slowly. Yeah. I find most people have something or someone they'd be unwilling to sacrifice. What a song for this moment, too. Money where your mouth is. What would you be willing to do? Kill. Yeah, murder. You're a killer, aren't you? Oh, yeah, she is. I wouldn't say that. What else would you call it? You killed Rufus Griswold tonight, didn't you? Oh. You will be the king and queen of Fortunato, your birthright. No legal consequences. No way. That's a hell of an offer. What's the price? You're going to say it costs what, our souls or whatever? You already sold them tonight, one brick at a time. <laughs> the price is deferred. Let the next generation foot the bill. Dang. At the end of it all, just before you would have died, Roderick, your bloodline dies with you. Wow, so he knew that was his natural time to die anyways, and they knew the stakes were, would be their children. You'd live a long time, but when that curtain falls... Everyone takes a bow together. Jeez. Those kids would have quite the life. For how long? What's more loving, uh, 50 years of a gilded life or 70, 80 years of anxiety? I feel like this is so much worse that he already has kids. You're right. I didn't even think of that. It's an offer on the table. What do you say? What happens if we don't take the offer? Do they even ask that? I'd say that's a good deal. I'd say that's a done deal. Then say it. You have a deal. Wow. I don't even have kids. This is his, his thing. You too. You have a deal. Man, she already knew to just not even have kids. A deal's a deal. Aged a oh. hundred years in barrels. All of this has turned out so much worse than I thought. To the house of Usher, whose time has come. And I wonder if then he takes the kids from Annabelle because he wants them to enjoy that money. Yeah, it would make sense. Because he already screwed them over for life. Right. Get some sleep. Lots to do, you two. 
We should settle up. We just did. Man, I wasn't even processing that he already had kids. I thought this would be like a vague deal that they didn't truly understand the consequences of it. They knew everything. Yeah. Well, that was loopy. Do you think she meant? I mean, I guess you could assume that they just thought it was crazy bar talk. But once she starts listing off details of like bricks and killing, it's kind of done. We never talked about it again. They never found Gritus. The board voted me in. And over the years, it was just a weird dream. There's no way. She's got to just be messing with them. Yeah, I don't think. <laughs> oh, so that was like so stealthy. Like, what a lawyer. He's so much more than a lawyer. I feel like she's just going to be behind him. Yeah, right. Like, nice try. <laughs> Yeah, stressful, huh? <laughs> wow, that was amazing. Oh, might as well have a drink, man. You know you're dead. Can he, like, join her team? Cut off my hands and my head and then get to drop 100 miles out. That's still the dance? <laughs> uh, yeah. It's nothing personal. Oh, I know, Arthur. And I kind of set you up. You really don't remember me. Have they met? The Transglobe Expedition. And there was that woman, too. You didn't partake, but you saw what they did. Jeez. You've enjoyed a sense of immunity throughout your life, but it isn't yours. Well, technically, he could never lose. Camille Lespano, she had a file on everyone, even you. The surface alone will get you 20 to life. Whoa. Ride the phoenix out of Fortunato's ashes or watch it fly away from a federal prison cell. No spouse, no children, but everyone loves something. What does he love? Thank you for your consideration, but I think I'll play on my hand. How? He said no to her. Fair enough. What a lonely life. I know, right? This has been a pleasure. Dang. He just says nothing, really. I can't believe Juno would leave you here by yourself. Don't blame her. She has to do her own thing. That place wasn't good, Grandpa. Our family did bad stuff. It's not too late to fix it. Damn. If only he had control of the company still, maybe he could just give it to her and sell it all or something, you know? He's already on the outs. I mean, he's about to die, and so is Madeline. <laughs> yeah. You know, I told them. The terms were clear. But she doesn't count as the next generation. To have to spell out the definition of the word bloodline, but... <gasps> what? I feel like next generation would just be the next generation. Did they say next generation or did she say bloodline? I don't think she said bloodline. There are moments like these that bring me no oh, joy. fuck. Damn, she just dead? Let me tell you a story about your mother. She inherits a sizable fortune, puts it to work immediately. She calls it the Lenore Foundation after her daughter. Oh. When you got her out of the house, you saved those people. I thought you should know that. Fuck. She died earlier tonight. She's been texting you all night. Scans your social media posts and makes a digital cue. I can't believe she's dead. That was really sad. I guess the goddamn thing was activated because it's been texting me all night. That's terrible. Nevermore? Yeah, nevermore. I mean, that's it. That's all of them. I for sure thought she was safe, technically. Yeah. Well, I guess we finally come to it. Oof. Take a look. Ooh. They'd each be alive today if it weren't for you. Jeez, raining bodies. That's your true monument, Roderick? You said that's Madeline down there. It is, at least I think it is. What is that? Uh, Verna? Nope, Madeline. So who's in the basement? Oh, oh. what the fuck? 
Roderick? Oh, so this was earlier. Oh, yeah. Is she in the walls in the basement, just like Rufus? So that's it, is it? Nothing more we can do. Except we changed the world. We did, didn't we? We did. Lots of death. Would we have done anything different? I suppose that's the only question left. I would hope you would choose differently. They point at you and me like we're the problem. They fucking invented us. We stand tall and proud, brother. Oh. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. No way. I did not even see that coming. I mean, is she going to let that happen? Who, Verna? I assume so. God, get her ready for fucking being a mummy. You are a queen, and you're gonna live forever. Oh, is she just like stumbling down there without eyes? She'll have everything she needs down there. This takes a little getting used to. Damn, Roderick. I honored her. Are you sure she was dead? You know, maybe not. Oh my God. I knew I would climb to the top of the tower on a pile of corpses. Augie, get ready. Oh. Jeez. Oh, slide out? Okay. Oh. It pulled other things down into the earth with it. My case for one. Pointless now. Yeah, right? Juno inherited everything. Completely dissolved it. Nice. She weaned herself off Ligodon. Good job, Juno. Camille's former assistants turned over a mountain of files to the police. Ah, uh, he knew it was coming. The only conviction from the Fortunato pharmaceutical case. Crazy. And he will die in prison. It don't matter in the end. I don't fucking care why you did it. <laughs> I'm going home to my husband, my kids. I'm the richest man in the world. A mystery of mysteries. All right. All right. That was episode eight of The Fall of the House of Usher. What'd you think? I'm bummed it's over. Because <laughs> I really liked that show. Yeah. But wow, what an incredible way to wrap up the series. It definitely went in ways that I'm like kind of shocked about. Or just like didn't really anticipate. Yeah. I feel like this is one of the episodes in the series that felt different. There was a handful of episodes, like a couple of them, that we were like, that felt different than some of the other ones. And I feel like this was one of them. There wasn't as much like shock factor in it, but it was still surprising, like what was happening. I guess it wasn't like in your face type yeah. of situation, but it was more of like, I guess we can just kind of like rifle through. Like I definitely thought it was going to be some sort of like deal with the devil. I know Verna Raven is not necessarily the devil. We've seen comments like Angel of Death or like the Grim Reaper or stuff like that. It's just kind of like her job, you know, like I just thought it was going to be a little bit more vague and I thought that there would be a little bit more towards the transition of like Roderick into this terrible person but I think we were just tricked the whole time. That was huge and I felt we were meant to be Annabelle in that situation and yeah. seeing Roderick as an old man like we're assuming like Oh my God, what are the things that he went through in his life to get here compared to the man that he was, this family man that we see at home? It literally just took money, but that switch was so quick that like, it was like whiplash. It honestly didn't phase them at all to kill no. Rufus and like killing Rufus by like poisoning him would have been like, dang, that's crazy. They buried him alive in the walls of the building with a candle, with a message for him to like look at as he dies alone for like a week. Like that was way over the top in terms of killing someone. It was very interesting because there was a lot of things, especially that Madeline did that we saw in this episode where she almost tried to justify 
what she was doing throughout. Yeah. There was two moments in particular that I feel like that. And one was that long speech at the end that she had with Roderick in the basement right before he kills her. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> tries to kill her. Um, and talking about like consumerism and, you know, everything going on in the world right now. And that, oh, like they want to blame us for what we've done, but look at what everyone else is doing. And it just, everything, it just felt like she just was doing anything to justify what they'd done. Yeah, not necessarily taking accountability and like, hey, we changed the world, like we did something. It's like, yeah, technically you did change the world by killing millions of people addicted to this drug. You should not necessarily be proud that you built an empire on a pile of bodies or whatever the phrase was. So yeah, there was a real effort to try to justify it. Even when they're like burying Rufus, they're like seemingly kind of justifying it. Be like, exactly. like yeah, you were digging up graves. People are dead because of you. Like we're just taking out a bad guy. It's like, yeah, kind of, but you're also like hardcore torturing him technically and then doing it so that you can just take his place not necessarily with the ambition to do things right and like do good in the world. Like you just want to be him. Exactly. Because Augie like gave Roderick that opportunity when he's going through this case and he's making this case against Fortunato. That was your opportunity to do the right thing in this circumstance. But instead of doing the right thing, you screwed over Augie and then... Just became another bad guy. But in like the same like breath, go and kill Rufus to become the new Rufus. Like that whole transition was so quick. I was not anticipating that flip of the switch. And then for him to come home and the way he spoke to Annabelle. And it's so sad. You literally saw her heart break in that moment when she realized who she was married to. And the fact that she's like, I made up this person that I fell in love with because that was never you. Yeah, I mean, you say like flip of the switch, but I, I like you saying us being Annabelle. Yeah. Like, cause technically they, there was no switch. Like for Annabelle there was, Yeah. but Roderick was just always like this. We're going through this whole series being like, man, Roderick seems to be so nice in the past. Madeline seems to be like the like negative voice in his life, mm -hmm. what's gonna happen? What kind of like cataclysmic event is going to shift Roderick? Nah, he's just totally cool with murder. Yeah. He was totally on board with all of this pretty much the whole time. Like this is just who he always was. And we as viewers realized it pretty much as like Annabelle realized it and was just like, damn, I just totally made up a good guy when there wasn't a good guy to begin with. Yeah, and I think a huge moment for me shifting in Roderick as well is with everything going on is the moment that they're in this bar, they're making this deal with Verna. As they were speaking through it, it flipped in my head so quickly that I was like, you have kids already. Yeah, I, I wasn't. In my head, I was like, Madeline's not gonna have kids. He's gonna have kids. I was thinking future kids. Yeah. But then you pointed out like, no, he's making this deal with two kids already. Yeah, like you have two children, like two innocent children. Like they haven't been on this earth long enough to even yeah. like imagine what their whole lives are going to be like. And you've just sold, like you've put a price on their lives and also an expiration. Yeah, but there's a lot of like... I, I'm not going to say like good sides, like good and bad or pros and cons, but it's just like interesting is the best that I can say, because it's like, what is better? Like, what would some people take 30 years of being ungodly rich or 70 years of like being miserable? So it's just like, oh, OK, like they put it in that context. And also you brought up a really interesting point, like how Roderick threw money at his kids to kind of get them over. It's like, well, technically, it, whether he believed it or not, but you could look at it like, oh, I know my kids are going to die at some point. Like, I better get them on my side or else they're not going to benefit from all of this money. They're just going to be, you know, miserable and I'll be rich and stuff. So it's like, is that good or bad? Is that just I, I'm not saying it is. I'm just saying it's like interesting when you really break it down that they fully knew what they were doing 
And yeah, you can kind of say like they just were drunk and thought it was just like a silly game. That's what I was going to say. Like, I don't think that there was any intent other than power, having the power to take them away from Annabelle. Yeah. And I think that whole like, oh, is it a game or not goes out the window when she's literally detailing the murder you just did that she was like not there. And it was just shocking the ease at which they murdered Rufus and like the immediate answer to be like, yeah, deal. You got a deal. Like they didn't even question. They didn't even like, oh, well, what happens if we don't take the deal? Yeah. No, it was just, oh, yeah, rich money, power. Yeah, I'm in. And getting away with murder. Getting away with murder. Never like having to face any sort of crime. Yeah. No consequences for any actions. So that was the most shocking reveal. One of the more depressing reveals was Lenore or Nevermore. That sucked. I thought she was safe. I thought it was just his kids. Yeah, I missed that in that conversation with Verna in the bar. I thought he also said the next generation, but she probably said the next generations. Yeah. Meaning the bloodline. So that was a shocking moment. I was not anticipating that Verna showed her mercy. She let her know like everything that was going to happen, that her mom was going to be okay, that she was gonna help save millions of people all in her daughter's honor. And because of her daughter. Yeah, because she was brave enough to break in there and to get her help, get her to an ICU versus letting her dad just continue to do what he was doing. Yeah. Even though he died, but you Still. know what I mean? And she was gone in an instant. No pain. Yeah. And she, I think, had that offer for a lot of these kids. Yeah. If they would have just made the right choice. And Lenore made the right choice by, you know, like you said, sticking up to her dad and, you know, giving the cops the real story, not the Pim, right? Yeah, Pim story. Mm -hmm. I also like Pim. Like, not taking the deal. That was interesting because Pim has obviously lived a life very similar to the Ushers. He was not making good choices. He would turn a blind eye to things or be involved in these terrible things. And Verna had her eye on him from his round the world trip yeah. to begin with. So that was just a very interesting conversation. But in the end, for him to accept the consequences and knowing what they were going to be. Right. Verna told him exactly what was going to happen. Those files were going to be found and gave him that offer. And now he is going to go to jail, but he's not. I mean, did he not accept the offer or did he not have anything to offer in return? I don't know. That's another. <laughs> there's so many. <laughs> interesting angles to like all of these people's end but it was also just like sad because going through this i was like dang this lawyer is so cool he's so good at his job he's so capable of things and then we get to his final moments and i'm like he doesn't have anything that's sad like yeah. what a life did what life did he live going from this grand adventure to just like nothing just yeah. nothing it was just the ushers that's all he had and that's a job that was it. And now they're all gone and now, now you're just, going to prison. Yeah, now he just rots in jail. So it's just like, oh, that sucked. Like, that was sad. So I don't know. That was crazy as well. I just think it was kind of like you said, it wasn't like super shocking as like, you know, mutilation type of death scenes. Yeah, like <laughs> a good number of the previous episodes. Right. But it was still very... Surprising. Surprise. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Surpri yeah. The fact that Lenore dies, the fact that they made this deal fully aware of the consequences, the f like how they killed Rufus, the fact that this jester was Rufus this whole time, mm -hmm. and the fact that Madeline, we've heard her downstairs this whole series, and it's literally her just stumbling around the basement with her eyes cut out. That was something else. And I wonder if it was Verna like not letting her die or if he just really didn't kill her, you know? Cause I mean, she made Roderick, Verna made Roderick throw up the pills. Yeah. 
So I'm wondering if she like wouldn't let her die until it was her time to die or their time to die. Right, together. That's a great point. I, I'm sure Verna was like, no, Part not yet. Yeah. <laughs> you, you got to stumble around until they're done talking. Then you can go upstairs and kill them. Yeah, that was, uh, that was just very brutal. And I feel like this entire series, I've just been in such awe of specifically of Roderick and Madeline, the actors that play them. Yeah. Just everything about them is just so gross, like, and malicious, and they just play the parts so well. I mean, as is most of the children in this, especially because we've seen them all so many times right. and see the range that these actors have. But the two of them were just absolutely phenomenal. So that ending scene was like, oh my God, because this entire time, Madeline is just like so statuesque like she doesn't have a lot of emotion she doesn't have a lot of things going on she seems just like such a dark character like no empathy not nothing yeah there's nothing about her that she just is like power hungry she'll do anything to get there and so at the end when she's struggling and crawling up those stairs and she's now blind like all of the things is just it it just like knocked her down to a shell yeah, it's just the bottom level. Yeah. I think it's crazy. Maybe it's just my own like ignorance or whatever, but just like how much I wanted to believe that Roderick was a good person in the past. Mm -hmm. And also I thought that there would be more regret, not necessarily regret or like apology or something in the end. I didn't really get anything like that from Roderick. Like he just kind of told the story. I was like, yeah, it was my fault. But hey, I did it. Like, I don't know. I feel like he went through it more during the season though. In the conversations that he's had with. That's true. I guess throughout is when you would really see not necessarily like one big moment at the end. Mm -hmm. I just didn't get that feeling that like, I thought at the very, very end was just going to be this big, it wasn't worth it type of thing. But I think it was kind of worth it to him a little bit. They, yeah. I mean, they could still have regret, but I don't know. Given the choice again, would they would they do it? I mean, they had that that talk. Yeah. So I don't know. What a crazy family. It was a wild ride. I have to say too. We've said throughout the series, especially in the beginning, that we are not familiar with Poe's work. But I actually did know at the very end, not the very end, the scene where Lenore dies. Oh really? I did know that piece. Oh, you've heard that like poem yes. or before a story or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But so that's the that cool. Nevermore, right? Yeah. Interesting. I thought it was cool. This show has to be spectacular if you know Poe. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. Because that, for me, that was the only moment in this that I actually, like, recognized. I mean, you don't have to know Poe to enjoy this, but I'm just sure, like, it really takes it to the next level. Oh, yeah. But they do such a good job of of getting the actual stories, the dialogue in there with the narration or whatever it may be. And it just so perfectly fits each episode. Yeah. The way this is written, like I just can't even imagine having like this type of mind to be able to put something like this together. No, this was definitely spectacular mm -hmm. and I had an amazing time with it. Yeah. If I have to like rank it, even though I love this, mm -hmm. I think the reality is, is it did not make me as emotional as any of the Flanagan stuff we've seen so far. And it also didn't scare me as much as, so it's like, it wasn't the scariest and it wasn't the most emotional. Like, I don't think I shed a tear this entire series. I almost with like Lenore and then the whole story of like him getting text messages from like fake dead Lenore essentially, yeah. that almost got me. But I think over time, Midnight Mass has taken like close to number one spot, but it's so hard to beat Hill House, Haunting of Hill House. Yeah, this wasn't the scariest. This wasn't the- Saddest. Saddest, but I do think that this was the most clever, the way that it was tied in. Especially if we knew Poe. I think, if, I think if we like really knew Poe, then that would just like leapfrog this up like way higher. Yeah, so for me personally, I'm gonna go Hill House, Midnight Mass, Fall of the House of Usher, Bly. Bly? Yeah, I'm Hill House, Midnight Mass, Bly, Fall of the House of Usher. Interesting, interesting, okay. But I mean, you're talking about a fraction of, yes. of a difference. Yeah, no, I mean, that's like 
if we have to rank them, but they're all so good. And they're so different, which I like and I enjoy because we're getting to see like this range of Mike Flanagan's work, which is crazy. Cause it's like, it's Mike Flanagan and you have like a lot of the same cast and they could still do all of this different things. Yeah. I mean, how many like other creators are out there where you can just like, oh yeah. 10 out of 10, 10 out of 10, 10 out of 10. Yeah. I can recommend and anything I've seen from Mike Flanagan so far, I would recommend it to anyone, regardless of what genre you like or anything. I actually just saw something on Twitter today. I don't know if it's true or not, but I think Mike Flanagan might be in talks for a new Exorcist movie. Oh. Fuck no, I yeah. will never. I was I, like, you are not. I can tell you right now, that. I'm not watching that. If Mike Flanagan gets his hands on The Exorcist, not a chance in hell I will ever watch that. Because that will fucking, that will be the last thing I ever watch, that's for sure. So anyways, Mike Flanagan, amazing, amazing work. Always. And I mean, there's a lot of other stuff that we haven't seen. There's other movies. Yeah, I think there's a, a, a ton of movies. And then we also have Midnight Club, which I yeah. think was supposed to be like multiple series. And it's only one for now, unless someone else picks it up. Yeah, who knows? Yeah, so let us know. I've been seeing comments on this show of people giving us recommendations for Flanagan movies. Yeah, movies. I think that's probably our next step is to hit a couple of his like older movies. Yeah, because we've only seen... Doctor Sleep. Yes. Which I fucking love. Yeah, that. you loved Doctor Sleep. And that was kind of like our introduction, no? Or did we do Hill House first? I think we did Hill House first. Okay. I don't know if we knew... I want to say that we were like watching Dr. Sleep and it said like Mike Flanagan. And I was like, oh, no way. <laughs> yeah, I, I think we went into that not realizing, but I don't remember. I'm sure it's memorialized in our reaction. Yeah, so. uh, yeah, we could watch the video to, for us to remember. Yeah, that was such an incredible movie. So this was great. I was so excited every week to watch this. Yeah. So I'm sad it's over. Like pretty much every series that we've watched. But yeah, this is great. Yeah. And he's still out there cooking stuff up. So yeah. there's something to look forward to in the future. I'm sure he's going to continue to make amazing stuff. So that's super exciting. Yeah. So if you'd like to see the full length reaction for this, as well as everything else that we've reacted to, the link to our Patreon is in the description. If you'd like to interact with us on any other types of social media, all those links are in the description as well. And with that, peace, everyone. Bye. Bye.